and we are live from Play NYC. We have the legend. It's on Law Podcast. Lords of Game Tonight. We have the legend Dan Butchko. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm so happy this is finally happening. Mm -hmm. 2019 Play NYC. Let's start from the beginning. Like as far as the beginning of how this came, was it a developer only thing, and then it kind of birthed into this? What was the initial vision from the beginning? Sure. So um, we at Playcrafting started literally 10 years ago as a meetup group in New York. So the, the first ever thing was just 30 game developers in the back of a bar in like March of 2009, wow. showing each other like games on their laptops. Wow. Um, so for five years, it was just a meetup group. And then it was just growing and growing and growing. And so I came in in uh, 2014 and built an actual company and an organization around and in service of that community. So wow. it started as all developers, okay. um, and really developers are still like the core of, of what we're doing and, and the core of everything, but because more and more developers were showing off more and more games, players and fans and, and influencers and streamers and media just like started getting more and more excited about it. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we started running a, uh, a quarterly play test okay. uh, event and playtesting is when uh, game players get to play a game before it's done so that their feedback helps shape how the game is. That's awesome. Yeah, That's it, awesome. how it's finished. Kind of like when a beta is released yes. publicly. Mm -hmm. But playtests are typically like in person, like the events that we were doing. Yeah. So we were doing like four of those a year. They were seasonal. Mm -hmm. But because more and more people were going to them, at one point, I was like, this isn't a play test, this is an expo. It's an expo at this yeah. point, yeah. <laughs> People are like selling their games here, too. Right. And so we still do those expos. We were doing four of them per year. But the summer one, we decided, all right, New York needs its own all games, so full good. scale convention, um, games only. Like, let's do it and let's take that summer one and like blow it out Dude, i'm so glad you said that because one of the things that inspired me about dan is you said something key you said if you wanted to get into games i saw this one of your old player nyc's that it kind of sucked that you had to go to san francisco yeah. you had to go to boston and pax and to see you bring that vision to new york city our home most of the home of the lords here yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's something that we really hold near and dear and you keeping this alive so as far as what do you think are the detractors to, to to keep it from getting to where it needed to be? Some of the obstacles you may have faced initially. Uh, to for for what the uh, just the bringing the convention up. to New York City because something this is something we've always wanted yeah, for a long yeah. time. I think a, a big thing is cost. So I'm like very very adamant that uh, the convention needs to be in Manhattan because it's central to Jersey, the region, the airports, the like New York itself, the five boroughs. Um, love all the boroughs, but Manhattan is right in the middle. Um, and honestly, like if, if you want to be like super central and really accessible, like Manhattan makes the most sense. It, it makes the most, most sense logistically. Yeah. And again, from a venue standpoint, I'm, I'm, I remember like Terminal, Terminal 5. Terminal 5. Yeah. Then you did like Hammerstein, Hammerstein Ballroom, yeah. and now the Pavilion. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. How did that come about? So that came about because, you know, the first and second year, Play NYC wasn't really super known yet, and so um, I thought it was really important to find like a very New York, unique venue, um, and just like fill it with games in a way that it had never been done before, right. um, to kind of like get the attention on it, to showcase the developers, um, put it in a place that just like the general public, players, like just knew of. Right. Um, and so that was really like a big goal in the first couple years. This year it was like, all right, we've done this two years already. We know it's a thing. We know we can grow it. Um, how can we find a space in Manhattan that is just one giant floor that we can like more uh, proactively design an experience for people around? And so, awesome. yeah, so, so now with everything being on one floor and everything being sort of centralized, yeah, we're able to like, <laughs> yeah, we're able to like map out a path for like how we want people to experience like, we like the activity of walking through Play NYC to be a game in and of itself. It's a game of games. Yes. So it is like there's a lot of design that goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, the team spent like 30 to 40 hours on like the, the floor. And it, and it shows. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, you know, 
there already are so many events that happen at convention centers, and and you know we want to grow and grow and grow Play NYC to the point that we need to go somewhere like that. But in the meantime, going to places that are very have a very unique feel to them. You know, this is one giant show floor, but there's all these pillars with these like great lights that we can do like rainbow oh, colors yeah. all Dude, throughout. He's got the colors popping. He's got everything yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. One thing I want to mention is also I feel like Play NYC is a very intimate feel with the developer and that you guys welcome feedback. I mean, the developers welcome feedback, and I thought that is very helpful in the whole construction process. Yeah. Is that something that you encourage the devs to do, or yeah. how, how's the whole mentality behind that? So absolutely, and I, and I think that's where um, the difference with Play NYC is that we are doing events in New York and other cities all year round with these developers and many other developers like them. Um, a lot of folks come in just for Play NYC just because it's so big. Um, but like we, like our team knows the stories of most of these developers, mm -hmm. and the ones that are new, we encourage them to like keep coming back and to uh, come to things that we're doing in their city or close to them. And wow. so, so yeah, they're they're really baked into the show itself right from the start mm -hmm. because, like on our end, like we're going to be held accountable because it's we're not just doing one thing per year. Right. Like we're seeing everybody all year round. You know, awesome. so. Like being as transparent as we can be, um, having like feedback forms on our end, as which well, is awesome. Organizing mm -hmm. perspective, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the fact that there's a lot of t studios here and teams here that are smaller, making uh, indie games, mobile games, tabletop games. There are like a, a great bunch of like larger studios here too. But the core of our community started out as that meetup group. And so you get to you're not there with like a brand ambassador that's showing the game right. on behalf of a developer. Right. Most of the booths here are being run by the developers who are actively making, making their games. The game. That that's the difference. And I think I'm, you just nailed it. That's what I felt initially. Again, yeah. it's an intimate feel. You're getting hands on with the creators, and that to me is an experience that's worth the price of admission. Yeah. So for me personally, I've seen uh, my guys from Decoy Games oh, are here. I love them. We met them at PAX. We did coverage on them. At packs for Iron Lord Podcast. It was absolutely phenomenal to see their journey and to see how that's going on. And then there's been so many other games, like a variety of games that's really impressive, man. And I just wanted to thank you. Keep the vision alive for New York City, man. This means so much to us. And, and where else do you envision playcrafting going in the future? Well, right now we're in uh, New York, Boston, and San Francisco. Uh, and we've started doing some events, especially through our partnership with Bose and other uh, partners that have come in. Shout out to Bose AR. Shout, Shout out to Bose AR. AR. Shout out to Bose AR. <laughs> One of our big sponsors. Represent, represent. Bose, yep, Bose. yep. Um, we've started to do some events in uh, San Diego, Seattle, um, and some other places too. And so I like this idea of being a place for uh, developers from smaller teams and smaller studios. Maybe they work on their own to also like interact with like huge companies like Bose. Mm -hmm. The games in the Bose A Arcade were made by developers in New York. Wow. They're launching at this convention. Wow. They were all paid to like they were paid to make those games. Like it is it's legitimate and they it, it's this really powerful way where we can be community first and also help support businesses and help mm -hmm. get games into stores. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want this to be a place where both community and business and success right. all can kind of gel together mm -hmm. um, and just really showcase the diversity of right. the games themselves, the people who make them, the people who play them. Right. It's really a mirror image of what is so great about New York. That's, that's awesome you said that. And that vision ultimately I think can pay off. I think one of the other hurdles I was going to ask you about was yeah. just like from a tax break perspective. It's not easy to come to New York from a right, right. development and publishing standpoint. You know, are we still making any progress in that end to, to get even more sometimes of the bigger bigger games to, to feel comfortable to come out to New York say, say, hey, it's okay. You don't have to break the budget just yeah, to come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's certainly, I, I think that's one of the big factors here. So places like California, uh, Montreal, mm. uh, they have uh, like tax incentives for developers uh, so that it encourages these larger companies to set up offices. So the best part about Play NYC and about New York and about our community and folks like us is that there is very much that New York mentality where it's like, like 
don't tell me that I yeah, can't yeah, do yeah. it here, even without that kind of support. Exactly. We do have Avalanche Studios. We do have people can fly. Mm -hmm. You know. Salute. Yeah. Um, Dots is a it's a mobile studio, but they are huge. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's it's a again a reflection of that New York attitude, and so. The folks that have it and that are in it um, are kind of going against all odds, succeeding, some failing, um, and so we want to be here to make sure that like there's a consistent support network for them. Dude, Dan, this is awesome, man. I mean, yeah. this is the Lord's first Play NYC. Not the last. Not the last. Definitely not the last. And it's one of these things that, again, New York City, the mecca, right? It's only right that we have our own conference, that we have our own convention, and we're going to do our best to support this thing, man, yeah, and to yeah. keep your vision alive. This has been a fantastic event. We love what we're seeing. Yeah. Dan, keep up the fantastic yeah, work. Thank you. Play NYC in the building. Dan Butchko, the legendary Dan Butchko. Iron Law Podcast. This is Lord Cognito here. The absolute pleasure once again. Thank you. And, dude, we, we will see you, more of you, and hopefully get you an IOP in the future and break down your history even more so. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Thank you for being here. Iron Law Podcast. Lords of Gaming.net.